So what do you make of these suggestions that uh, in future, very soon, we could be seeing uh, corporates floating their bonds across East Africa? Uh, it's a quite good move and uh, we've been expecting this. Uh, you'll remember that we have more than six companies listed in Kenya uh, who have gone to cross-list uh, in Uganda, uh, Tanzania and latest, and latest in Rwanda. And, and I think uh, East Africa and Kenya as nation media, they're doing extremely very well, not only in this market but in those markets as well. And I think uh, there's, there's a window to give opportunity for the investors uh, on the corporate um, mm. uh, bond side that they can be able to do. And I think the demand is there as well. Uh, we've seen, for example, Safaricom did its um, MTN um, as well as the syndicated loan. But the interest we got was from uh, the NSSF from Uganda, NSSF from Rwanda, so, so which means there's a huge potential and appetite right. for a regional corporate bond. I mean, you mentioned the fact that Kenyan companies are cross-listed across uh, the East African community. But I mean, one would argue Kenya is the regional hegemon and Kenyan companies, just by way of valuations and size, are larger in asset size as well. The dynamism of the other companies coming from other members of the East African community, what do they offer? Um, I think that there's a very good opportunity actually for the companies coming from the region. Uh, for one, um, should they have been able to access the Kenyan market, for example? Um, it's, a, it's a wider pool of capital, and um, I'll imagine, uh, like, for example, Uganda Clay or, or, or Twiga, um, a cement from, from Tanzania, uh, if they were to do large issues um, than the ones they have done to list in those markets, they can be able to get probably a better and a higher subscription, and therefore a better valuation for their shares. So I think. Um, uh, it provides um, everyone an opportunity to access wider markets. In fact, uh, in terms of uh, marketing of their products as well as uh, regional presence, mm. I think it, it, it's a good opportunity for them now to diversify and come from those small niche markets and probably right. get into Kenyan market as well. Staying with comparisons, I mean, Kenya is obviously the largest market and corporate bonds listed are valued at about 60 billion Kenyan shillings. How do other markets compare? Uh, the other markets, I think uh, Uganda, we don't have uh, such. Um, I think that there's a bit of a difference in the microstructure and how these markets are structured. Uh, in Kenya, for example, we have a very strong um, commercial paper market, um, uh, which has almost 17 issues currently uh, uh, trading in the market. Then we have those corporate bonds, about 11 of them. Um, I can't speak of the same, obviously, in mm. Tanzania and as well as in, uh, in Uganda. Because, for example, in Tanzania, um, part of the um, companies will easily do um, a syndicated loan, which is not necessarily listed, uh, neither is it tradable. So, so therefore, you will not have that kind of market that has been yeah. very much uh, exploited. And that's why this regional market can really provide an opportunity for some of the big companies, for example, in these other markets, right. uh, to do the same kind of thing. What would be the listing requirements? And I'll remind you, Fred, of the time where uh, Tanzanian companies were issuing IPOs, launching for the first time in Dar es Salaam, and there was huge resistance to Kenyan investors entering that market. Uganda and Rwanda, which you mentioned earlier on, have some challenges with their companies listing outside of their local markets. They don't have enough local listings. So what would the approach need to be here? Um, I think it's good to be like um, uh, the current system where it provides for the main market, uh, for the corporate bonds, as well as an alternative market. Um, and I'll imagine in Kenya, for example, uh, a company that has more than um, um, one to list for the corporate bonds has to have at least 40% of that offer can be listed in the stock exchange. And that one has to be beyond 100 million Kenyan shillings, about $1.5 um, million. So which means if you are to join the other markets as well, you may have to bring that uh, minimum entry uh, level from 100 million Kenya shillings to maybe 50 million, um, which is going to be a sizable company uh, in Uganda or Tanzania for those companies that can come and list. And then secondly, the other thing has to do with the number of shareholders. In Kenya, for example, they'll require that uh, for the shares, there's got to be at least 100 shareholders. But for the corporate bonds, there's no any particular amount. In fact, the thing is, you must indicate in a information memorandum that you are looking to at least beat the minimum subscription, which is 20%. Um, and I think if these ones are put together, considering the size of these markets, I think we should be able to have um, both bigger companies and smaller companies right. joining the market as well. 
Obviously, the debate that's been raging in Kenya for much of 2010 is banks are calling for over-the-counter trade. Uh, as the Capital Markets Authority talks about getting rid of stock brokerages, the banks want to be able to transact independently of the uh, equities market as well. Is that also a concern across the region? Uh, not really. Because, first of all, Kenya doesn't have OTC. And also, we don't have the government securities market makers, neither do we have the primary dealers. However, other than Kenya, if you go to Tanzania and Uganda, you are going to get primary dealers there actively working. Maybe not in very liquid markets, but those primary dealers are there. We have in both markets at least five primary dealers who normally uh, um, become the link between the market and the central bank of those regions. So actually, I'll say in that aspect, Kenya is lagging behind in the region. And therefore, uh, the call for the OTC, I think, uh, is very important in Kenya. I know on Friday we have a consultative meeting for the stakeholders uh, co convened by CMA to discuss that. But um, I'm thinking it's going to be a positive thing if you're going to have some kind of a hybrid where we can allow whoever wants to trade in the stock exchange through the brokers proceed, as well as the banks that can do volumes across their own books without necessarily referring to the NSC as well do their thing. Um, so I think um, it's a good thing. There's been a bit of misunderstanding because I think uh, when something is new, some people don't seem to appreciate and understand its benefits. And, and I think some section of the stockbrokers have been saying, no, 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 we don't want to see. But I think this, the hybrid, I think is going to be the best for this market. And, and, and I think uh, already it exists in Uganda as well as in Tanzania. Let's talk about opportunities going forward. Uh, the one concern is that Government is the one that's largely crowding out the debt markets with most bonds, 90% of them being government uh, securities. So that's the first thing. The second one is as governments invest heavily in infrastructure, energy, rail and road, it provides opportunities for new debt to be launched. With that in mind, how vibrant is the space for corporates versus government treasuries? Um, I think it, it, it's obvious that the government has more than 90%. Uh, like in the stock exchange here, uh, the government debt um, is about 700, almost 800 billion uh, to be precise, which is um, uh, like maybe more than 12 times the corporate um, uh, debt market. But there's a reason for that. I think um, for a long, long time, corporates in Kenya didn't use to find the need to come to borrow and list those instruments because the banks will go there and probably give them some syndicated loans or they'll go there and give them some orders which are, seem to be very attractive compared to um, uh, them coming to the market because the cost of doing a corporate issue, for example, in Kenya used to be more than 7%. I think a bit of streamlining has been done there and right now a company can wake up and go and issue a corporate paper, even a commercial paper, at cost of not more than 5% of the issue. So it has become cheaper and therefore people are coming in. And secondly, I think with the government coming with the four uh, infrastructure bonds, it has opened ways for other companies as well to come and follow. I think Kenjian was a good example on that, uh, where they came after the government infrastructure bond was very, very successful. So um, I'm seeing it with time, maybe in the next couple of uh, years, you're going to see many com companies coming through and doing the commercial papers right. and, 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 and corporate bonds, uh, riding on the success of the government-related uh, um, bonds. And I think these are normal um, uh, growth, and, and maybe it's going to take some time before it happens, but that's going to be the way. The, the way.